I'm Josh Schneiderweiler, coming up on Football Today. Referee picks up the ball, and the game will end. A day of shame for a small few, but there are plenty out there that think like they do. Some fans chanted Dietmar Hopp. Others called him a son of a bitch. Was it a day of shame or finally the day German ultras had their voice heard? This weekend, Bayern Munich thrashed Hoffenheim 6-0 to extend their Bundesliga lead to three points. But their emphatic win isn't what made headlines in Germany or Europe. Instead, it was the referee's decision to stop the game not once, but twice due to vulgar banners. Today we speak with Christoph Biermann of Elf Freunde and ask... Why are Germany's ultras protesting Dietmar Hopp and the German Football Association? So, Christoph, uh, can you give a brief description of what happened at the Hoffenheim and Bayern Munich game this past weekend at Hoffenheim? There was a, a, a protest of Bayern Munich supporters uh, during the match. Uh, it was deep in the second half. Bayern was already 6-0 up. So the match was decided. And then the supporters of, or some Today of the supporters of Bayern Biermann Munich of were Elfreunde taking out ask, some banners they had brought with them. Today we speak with they Christoph were Biermann criticizing of or and ask, insulting Dietmar Hopp. Dietmar Hopp is the the majority owner of Hoffenheim and uh, a billionaire is also the founder of SAP a software company and they were insulting him as a son of a whore um, and there is a long story behind that uh, but the reaction was that the game was interrupted you can see that Hassan Salihamidzic came on as did the buying coach Hansi Frick and eventually spoke to the supporters it was taken down once and then they put out another uh, banner some minutes later again saying you a son of a whore and then the two teams left the pitch stopped the game for and some minutes and when they came out the last i think 13 minutes or so they were just kicking the ball around so there was not a proper match going on some fans have just stayed to watch this bizarre circus unravel so that is the basic what happened at Hoffenheim last weekend and there were a lot of things coming after this but it's not just that game that was impacted by these anti-hop banners Uh, there were similar incidents elsewhere right yeah, there was some something like this a day later on Sunday um, at the match between Union Berlin and Wolfsburg. There was one banner that was criticizing the German FA for imposing collective punishment. Uh, surprisingly, the match was also interrupted by the referee at that time. And because it's, it, there was no insult, I think it was a kind of political expression. And later on, also some, some public figures say, were saying that it was wrong by the referee uh, to decide like that. And some minutes later, uh, there were two banners coming up, one saying, again, uh, Dietmar Hopp, uh, you, you son of a whore. And also uh, his face in crosshairs. And after the second incident, the match was interrupted. Two teams went back to the dressing room as announcement uh, over the PA and so on. So probably running behind that mean at the moment. Uh, the referee's taking the players off the pitch here. Well, this is the protocol. The banner has come up again. Way to our left as the referee looks now. His right. And uh, when the uh, supporters, that was the Union Berlin supporters, put their banner down, the two teams came up and the match was played to the end. There was uh, something also at the third level of German football when Meppen was playing Duisburg and so on. So it was on several matches. This has obviously been the biggest topic in Germany this weekend. What has been the reaction from around Germany, from players, managers, officials, and fans to these events? 
It's a very complex discussion. So there was a lot of public anger um, uh, against the fan, especially from Bayern CEO uh, Karl-Heinz Rummenigge. He was saying the uh, fans crossed the line here. It can't go on like this. Similar quotes from Fritz Keller, who is the head of the German FA, and a lot of people from football who were saying that it can't go on like this with insulting one of the major figures of German football like Dietmar Hopp. But on the other hand side, it was also some people kind of defending not what the fans did, but what the background of the whole story is. Interestingly, also on the Steelcast podcast that you did earlier this week, you know, I didn't hear many people discuss the statements from the ultras who reacted following all of the discussion. And I just wanted to read a translated section from some of the Bayern ultras. This translation is via Felix Tamsut. So it's, quote, son of a bitch. The word became a big topic only with the criticism of Hoffenheim owner Dietmar Hopp. And in the statement, they also said that players like Timo Werner are called that. Dortmund fans, that term is used by a lot of people in football in Germany. Why is it okay when it's directed at a player but not a billionaire? <laughs> that's a that's a question I'm the wrong person to uh, to answer because I, you're absolutely right there is a contradiction it's directed at uh, some of the players even this week when uh, Schalke was playing Bayern Munich and, and Bayern Munich was coming back to Schalke with um, Manuel Neuer who comes through the youth system of Schalke and, and uh, Schalke supporters are still very disappointed that he some years ago left for Bayern and since then they criticize him as a son of a bitch or son of uh, a son of a whore. The, the, the German word is Hurensohn, and um, but but maybe the, the the difference is made that it's something else when some of the fans shout it or if you see it in in written language. It seems like it might also be because SAP, you know, which Hop obviously was the CEO of, sponsors the DFB, which is the German Football Association. I mean, uh, that's what some of the fans or the ultras kind of suggested in their statement. Yeah, SAP is also working together with the German FA on a, on a practical level. So they have uh, set up uh, software programs and data collection and stuff like this for the uh, German national team. So there is a close personal connection also between uh, several people at the German FA and, and Dietmar Hopp. And obviously, when we go back to the match on, on Saturday, there is a close relation between uh, Karl-Heinz Rummenigge and and leading figure as Bayern Munich and, and Dietmar Hopp. Uh, it's different if you uh, shout like at a player or someone uh, who is friend with the other big heads of German football. In another statement, the red fanatic Munich ultras referenced Hopp's demand that criticisms of his club should be, quote, equated with racial discrimination and to be punished accordingly. And this was a while ago that he mentioned that. Remarkably, it seems that players and other officials are kind of treating this criticism as racism or homophobia or things of that nature. Yeah, Thomas Müller, for example, said, uh, give hate campaigns, racism, anti-Semitism, homophobia, no chance. And it sounds like as if he would put the insults directed at Deep Mohop in that context. And I, I think that's really a problem because uh, things are mixed up. I mean, I don't want to defend the insults. Um, and I think it's absolutely not acceptable to put uh, somebody in crosshairs, especially. But yeah, so the two things, they shouldn't be connected. Why do you think they are mixing that up, though? Maybe people are not thinking enough about what the one thing means and what the other things mean. Yeah, it sounds a bit tough, but I think it's a bit of an intellectual problem to keep these categories apart. So let's analyze a little bit closer. What are the fans protesting exactly? 
The friends are protesting exactly against the collective punishment. So that means if some people are behaving badly in a section of the ground, later on all the supporters of a club can be punished. So uh, what happened in the past, many, many years ago, sometimes there were whole uh, sections of the grounds closed for uh, later matches. There is a famous example when RB Leipzig was insulted at Borussia Dortmund later on. Borussia Dortmund had to play a home match and the famous Südtribüne, the yellow wall, was blocked for this match and empty. And some years ago, the 2017 exactly, the German FA said to the fans they would stop collective punishment, but they didn't because, and then we, we come to Hoffenheim again, there were some incidents at the last Borussia Dortmund match at at Hoffenheim and four weeks later that was at the beginning of this year in, in February there was a decision that for the next re season Borussia Dortmund supporters are not allowed to come to Hoffenheim again and so everybody had the feeling that that was a kind of breach uh, of what uh, the German FA had said that they wouldn't go uh, for collective punishment and so all these protests against collective punishment and a deep mahop is a symbol for this. I'm happy you mentioned the Dortmund incident because five of their fans were actually sued by Hop because of what they said about him during one of these games. He actually recorded them secretly and won the lawsuit. It's a, a, a very long ongoing conflict between Borussia Dortmund supporters and, and Hoffenheim. So when it already started 10 years back when uh, Hoffenheim were the new kids on the block and they were the new kids on the block because Dietmar Hopp, the SAP founder with all his money had kind of bought their way in, into the Bundesliga and have been heavily criticized by uh, Borussia Dortmund supporters already with crosshairs and this Hurensohn or son of a bitch and whenever the two teams played each other there were uh, minor or bigger incidents uh, over the years and you're right Dietmar Hopp personally sued the supporters of Borussia Dortmund where he was gathering evidence with special microphones and high speed cameras and also there was a very funny or bizarre incident when some of the uh, people who was working at Hoffenheim Stadium was uh, having the, that is four years back I think was having a sonic cannon something like this to disturb the anti-hops chance in, in the stadium and uh, so you see there it's a long and winding and, and bizarre story that goes on for many years. But it seems like kind of from the outside that a lot of the issues that, you know, a lot of these other ultras from around the country and other fan groups have is kind of that they feel that their free speech is kind of being attacked because Dortmund was expressing their free speech against Hop and the 50 plus one. And they were essentially punished for that. You're right, it's about free speech, but it's also now the main issue is the collective punishment. And as I said, um, Hoffenheim and especially Dietmar Hopp is, uh, is a kind of symbol. And what they were saying is if we put out banners saying we don't want collective punishment or something like this, nobody reacts, nobody cares. But when we aggressively insult uh, somebody, everybody's talking about it. And, and obviously, as also we are doing, it's it's right. So is the implication going forward that there will be this three-step protocol for any banner criticizing a player, an owner, or an organization? Because as you mentioned before, in the game that you went to in the Wolfsburg Union Berlin game, it was just criticizing. It wasn't even insulting Hop. I think the, the situation now is it's a bit confusing and, and people don't know what to do. There was also Schalke, for example, coming out of the bush and saying, no, we, have, we don't have a three-step protocol, we have a zero-step protocol. And everybody was saying, well, what's this now? 
This week there were some cup matches in Germany and because the, the referee has a lot to do with dealing with the match and so they set up a, a little group so there's a match official from the uh, German FA coming uh, to every match normally and he and one person from the home and one person from the away team they are a kind of a small group that is dealing with the situation now so it's taken away from the referee that seem, seems to be the kind of new solution but things are developing right now and yeah We mentioned how this all kind of started with protests against Hop and his ownership. Can you give some background on his ownership and how this all started, really? Uh, Hoffenheim has been founded in 1899 and it has been playing on very low level amateur local uh, football in the Mannheim area for most of their existence and also Dietmar Hopp who is a big football fan used to play there on amateur or senior amateur uh, level so it was a, a very sleepy provincial uh, football club like there are thousands and thousands in Germany but towards the 90s and uh, especially beginning 2005 uh, Dietmar Hopp decided to invest a lot of money into the club and uh, bringing him to the top level and so within uh, three years from 2005 they went to from the third level of the German football to the Bundesliga but to be fair, in the 10 years after this, Hoffenheim has become a self-sustainable club. So they have a very good youth development. They have to sell players to finance themselves. So it's not like you pump millions and millions and millions into the club. He did it as to give them a head start, but now it's, it's, it's a self-financing club. The problem was that we have these restrictions with 50 plus one, so that the club has to be controlled by the members and uh, Hop found a way to kind of go around it to protect his investments and uh, the German FA let him go away with this and uh, that at that time caused a lot of criticism because you can say yeah but it's good what he's doing but you can also say uh, other clubs don't have the uh, possibilities and uh, they are not playing in the Bundesliga anymore because a club like Hoffenheim takes one place. So he was kind of like the precursor to Red Bull. And that's the reason why a lot of people kind of originally disliked him or amongst ultras. Yes, but the Red Bull story is much more aggressive and I wouldn't compare too much because a Red Bull is, is much more artificial, but there is a, a, a one figure who connects the both things, uh, that is Ralf Rangnick, who helped to develop the sporting side in the early years of uh, Hoffenheim and who was also very influential at uh, RB and, and Leipzig. So it seems like this is kind of the latest in a power struggle in Germany in this kind of modern age of massive commercialization between fans who believe in the traditional model, the 50 plus one, and people who support Hop and what kind of Red Bull represent and the new age of football. I wouldn't call it a power struggle. It probably looks a bit like this, but I would rather call it a, a cultural debate. Even now, uh, just now, a very heated debate. But you're right. It's always about what kind of football do we want, uh, do we want to have? Uh, who is it played for? Whose interests are cared for? And although it was very, very many parts of the discussion were very much over the top in recent days, I'm not too pessimistic about how things develop in the weeks to come because. I think apart from some hardliners, uh, most of the people in German football know fans and also ultras are very important for the match because the German Football League is presenting itself as kind of the 
authentic, fan league in world football, especially when you compare it to the more artificial world of the Premier League and others. So I think when things have calmed down a bit, we will come to hopefully a good conclusions. Also, I think the ultras have understood that they maybe went a bit over the top in recent days to step back a bit. I already mentioned the cup matches this week. There was, was some very funny banners, for example, at, at Frankfurt. Frankfurt has a notorious uh, ultra group, but they were hanging a banner over their fans and so that was saying uh, Adi. Uh, Adi is uh, Adi Hütter, the coach of uh, the manager of Eintracht Frankfurt. Adi, if you need need us to to interrupt the match, please let us know. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And, and that was a very, I think, a very nice uh, and funny comment. Um, uh, shall we put up a banner because we are 2-0 uh, up uh, and the opponent is increasing the pressure. So I, I like that. And maybe we have to go to this kind of uh, discussion from where we have started. You can follow Christoph Beermann's German football coverage in El Freunde and the Stylecast podcast. The show is produced by John McKenzie. I'm Josh Schneiderweiler, and this was Football Today. And if you enjoyed the show, please rate and review us on iTunes and share it with a friend. Thanks for listening and see you next time.